Who are you? Uh, first off, I'm going to just let you know now before I even tell you who I am. If you say something too weird, I might punch you. You are Ab? Soul. Welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, Ab Soul. Don't forget the dash, though. Ab dash soul. My oh, man, thank you. Right off the bat, Ab, would like to begin with a quote. I dedicate this one to Cletus Anderson for working harder than the average man. I mean, you gotta give it up. You gotta give it up for Cletus Anderson. You gotta give it up. Don't do it. Grandpa, are you what? If you're watching this, man, look, this is the first one, dog. This is beautiful. This record is amazing. Gotta give it up. You gotta give it up. On what record label? Oh, man, I don't know. This is before my time. What's this? What, what was this? Uh, what record label is it on? Magic. Oh, that's the Magic Dish joint, for real? Yes, exactly. Check it. Damn, that's the. Yo. Oh, that's oh! I had the oh shit! See this? See this was before I was born, bro. Now turn over the record and look at the back there. Who do we see is producing this? Produced by Cletus Anderson and Nate Dove. And spiritual advisor. Whoa, Kelvin! Oh, that's crazy. That's my uncle Kelvin. Kelvin Anderson. So, what can you tell the people about what's going on here? The Magic Disc record label. You can pull out some more. Oh, see the Magic this, Disc hey, record hey, label. I'm dazzled by the cover because it's, it's really provocative. It's looking like I can't see that well, but it looks very provocative. That's my grandpa for sure. They got the cleavage right there. Cletus, Cle yeah, that's it. Magic, yeah, this is the record. This is crazy. What can you tell the people about Kelvin and Cletus? Uh, well, Cletus is my grandfather, Cletus Anderson, and Kelvin Anderson is my uh, uncle. Uh, uh, they are the founders of uh, VIP, very important pla platters in Los Angeles area. And Magic Disc Record Label. Yes, the Magic Disc Record Label. Uh, I mean, they, they've done a lot, but uh, I, they, man, I've, I haven't seen this logo in a long time. And it continues on even further. Check this out, Absol. Cletus is behind the Saturn record label yeah, as well. This is, this is his label now. Like, he still owns, like, he probably still owns this too. But like, yeah. and check out, look for his name on there. What do you see right there? Produced by Cletus. Anderson. You see that, Grandpa? Look, this, they, all, they only talking about you. They ain't even, he ain't even got nothing for me yet. It's all you. I guess I was curious Cletus about that. Anderson, word. He's I, the man. I guess I was curious about that. Have you had access to the vaults of all these great record labels, like the Saturn record label? Absolutely. Absolutely. He has, like, all of this. He's like a, uh, he's kind of like a hoarder. You know what I'm saying? He, like, has, like, all kinds of records. Like, it's kind of, it's kind of sickening. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah. It's pretty amazing, too, because Saturn Records put out the first Ice T 7 inch and 12 inch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was, like, right before breaking. And I was thinking, Ab, hmm, I got to give you a little gift here. And right here I have a little button, the Magic Disc record label button. So you can wear that proudly on stage. Man, that's so hard. Thank you. That's so tight, man. I wonder if he still has this. Now, you worked at the Magic Disc store, not the label. I had a crib in there. Yeah, real talk. At the store, did you sell socks? Yes, eventually. Socks, drawers, white tees. So it went from vinyl to socks? Absolutely, yeah. Once the uh, the record industry, uh, physical distribution just crashed, we had to, you know, find other means. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Pro Club. Absol, what can you tell us about this particular group right here? Booyah Tribe. Yeah, they from the hood. These are the Samoan homies. These are the Samoan OGs from the hood. You feel me? Booyah. Carson, California, represent. You feel me? We in here. We in when did you first encounter them? I'm the king, too. You see that? If your future is unlimited, you know what I'm saying? You did? I'm just a younger from Delamo with a belt by Ferragamo. Who did that tattoo? Did Egypt do that? How you know that? Say something again. Say something, say something like that again. Knock them frames off, bro. I'm not playing with you. Shout out to Egypt, though. Great tattoo artist. Yeah, that's my girl, for sure. And shout out also to the Buya tribe. Yeah, for sure. These the homies, man. Absol, thank you, Street Goddess Entertainment. <laughs> I should punch you for that one, but I'm going to let you slide, though. What can you tell the people about Street Goddess Entertainment? Hey, she's just a beautiful... Oh, shit, my fault. She's just a beautiful soul, man. And, you know, I just appreciate all the the help that she, you know, all all of her assistance, for sure. She, in the early days. Yeah, very early on. You know, it's a long-term situation. We've been there for quite some time. So, yeah, shout out to Street Goddess, man. Absol, quote, she was calling Snap G, so I blazed a fat one for the homies and me. And speaking of homies, who exactly are these homies right here? Could you tell the people what's going on in this photo? Oh, we got to get out. We got to get out. Oh, 
man, it's my nigga Young Magic. If you look very colorful, maybe you can tell the people what's going on uh, there. Uh, man, this is the notch right here, man. This is the notch right here. You see that tat right there? That's the top notch. This is my first click, like like my first like real click. That's the homie King Rich. That's the homie Young Magic, Lord Legend. That's Agent J right there. What exactly are you wearing there? Very bright. Yeah, for sure. I'm swagging for sure. I got the uh, Puma track jacket on right there. I got this chain from Silver Island. It was legit. That's the Pro Club white tee that we sold at the shop. Uh, them is the shades from the Swap Meet though. For sure, they was like five, six dollars. But the fitted cap was nice. That was legit. When you're driving along 405, do you ever see the muffler man or the Porsche man? You know, this giant statue. <laughs> yeah, you ain't seen them though. What is that? Can you explain to the people? What is the muffler man, the Porsche man on 405? Shit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. That shit is just funny that you know that, though. <laughs> it's a bit of Carson, isn't it? Like, there's a bit of Carson. Like, Absol's a bit of Carson, so is the muffler man. Yeah, I'm the king of Carson, for sure. And the king of Carson can't tell you what the muffler man is, so, you know, you good. If you don't know, he's straight. Absol, you're into Malcolm X, too, aren't you? Absolutely, absolutely. How did you get into Malcolm X? Um, I mean, you know, he's he's kind of like um, desensitized in schools and shit for like uh, minorities and shit. So everybody knows about Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. You know what I'm saying? That type of thing. So I read his autobiography and it was great. And I was thinking, hmm, books are cool, but here's a gift for you. I have a record. This is Keith LeBlanc's 1983 record, Malcolm X. On Tommy Boy. That's dope. On Tommy Boy. It's the first sample-based record ever, actually. What? It is. That's dope. 1983, Keith LeBlanc, and there is an instrumental B-side here, so you can do some rapping over it. For sure. That's dope. That's dope. Shout out to Tommy Boy. I sold a lot of Tommy Boy records when I was a child. Working, I used to work in like the single section. You know what I'm saying? What's so great about Absol is you're very diverse, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Like you're into Malcolm X, and you're also into the Chipmunks. You love the Chipmunks, too. What you know about the A? Is this like the joint? Is, is it like in the Chipmunks voices, dog? This Alvin and the Chipmunks. Oh, yeah, these are my guys, man. Everybody love Alvin and the Chipmunks, though. From Malcolm X to the Chipmunks, but Charlie Brown, that's the best, isn't it? Charlie Brown is the best. Why did you like the Charlie Brown more than the Monks? Uh, I, probably because, you know, my mom just used to read Charlie Brown to me as a child before, like, before sleep every night. I think that's, like, probably why I'm so... I have such an extensive vocabulary. How about Apollo Burger? Did you ever go to Apollo Burger? Yeah, absolutely. For sure. They got the good uh, zucchini, fried zucchini right there. That's where my auntie, uh, she, my auntie Kaze, she used to uh, have a beauty shop like right close by. I used to have to sit there and wait for her to get off work and shit. And the Big Burger? Yeah, Big Burger. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, we still go there still. And the Carson Burger? Yeah, Carson Burger. That was like high school. It was cool. It was cool. We still go to Big Burger though, for sure. But your grandma's pork chops, that's the best. Absolutely. My grandma's pork chops will never go, never go untouched, ever. How about Ruiz Mexican burger and Mexican food? Ruiz, and that's where we used to ditch to go. That was the little spot they had to fire chili cheese fries right there by the, by the school. Is that usually what you like having? Is that usually what you order, the chili cheese? Like, I was mentioning all these burger places. What do you have at these burger that's places usually? Got. At Ruiz, that's all I got was the chili cheese fries. At, at Big Burger, I get the uh, double bacon Double bacon cheese, for sure. No relish, no pickles, none of that weird shit. Grilled onions. Absol, at South by Southwest this year, I interviewed Schoolboy Q at the TDE crib. Yeah, and I was jealous, because I was like, why you didn't know me? You know fat, but you know... <laughs> Excuse me. You know the fat boy, but you don't know me. Well, actually, I brought some gifts all the way down from Vancouver yeah. to you in Austin, Texas, but you were sleeping at that time. Yeah, I sleep a lot. I be off the shits. So I thought I'd give them to you right now. I have to bring them all the way back to Vancouver. And I'd appreciate that. You smoke weed? I'd like to give you a gift right here. You love the early Jay-Z, don't you? What can you tell the people about the early Jay-Z that's out there? Oh, uh, yeah, for real. Cud was swagging. Look at him, though. I think he was talking. Didn't you, like, bring this up in one of your old interviews? I did indeed. This is Jazz and Jay-Z together, and I have this is a gift here for you. Like wearing each other's chains and shit. Wearing, they was, like, wearing each other's clothes. Like, it's significant to note that, like, they were sharing still. Sharing is caring, even at this, you know what I'm saying, at this time. Thanks for remembering that. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I told you I'm a fan, real talk. There's Jay-Z's early work, and I also brought all the way to Austin, Texas for you, a Joe Budden Joey, LP. This is the best album yo this album right here i promise you this album bro man this album is crazy absol you are ab so 
And I was curious, has Absol ever used an ab roller? I think I got one at the house for sure. I don't be I don't I don't use those type of things, but I think we got one at the house. You do amazing. Did you get it off a late night TV infomercial? I think my mom's did for real. She T for that. That's amazing. Absol has an ab roller. She used it either for real. I don't use that though. I don't have abs no more. I had them back in high school. I don't got them no more. I think I lost my mind around the time I lost my six pack. <laughs> what was that? It was the only call. So how do you react when your friends do crazy things? How do you react when your friends do crazy things? I just be chilling, you know, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I just be chilling. I like, I like crazy shit. Because your friend Daylight, he almost pooped on the stage a little while back. See, and that's what I'm trying to tell niggas. See, like, that was a bar. And I ain't see it yet, though, because, I, you know, I, ain't, I mean, that, that's enough for me. I, I, that's dope enough. That's just the thought. But cause they said, he said, uh, they was booing him. And so he was like, if y'all keep booing me, I'm a boo-boo on the stage. That's genius. Come on, dog. He's taking battle rap to new heights, man. You can't, you can't, come on, dog. You got to be the shit. Like, you got to be the shit. Like, you got to think about the bars being done, like, even in the act or the antic. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Daylight, man. Shout out to whole Watts, California, man. We here, man. How about yourself? Have you ever gotten in trouble or got fined for swearing on the radio? Yeah. When the first time I went uh, with a... Uh, with uh, Tech and, uh, and Sway. Sway wasn't there, though. Uh, King Tech, yeah, for sure. I was like, cause he, he had told them, like, um, yeah, don't bring that, that that guy with the shades. Don't bring him back. <laughs> he was tripping. What was the offending word, and how much were you fined? I think I was saying nigga a lot. I think I got fined 500 for every nigga. I don't know. That's on top dog, though. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, he handles all that shit. Who are your radio faves? Like, you like Tom Likas? Yeah, Tom Likas is a genius, bro. Real talk. Everybody should listen to Tom Likas. He's a genius. Real talk. My uh, my boy uh, Python P put me on there. Absol, you're on The Heart Part 3 with Kendrick and J-Rock. Absolutely. And I was thinking The Heart Part 3. On The Heart Part 3, there's a sample of Parliament. They sample Parliament. Do that stuff. Dope. That's dope. Bootsy, George Clinton. Yeah, for sure. These are the guys, for sure. And this Boot is funk. This and, is funk. And Bootsy and George Clinton, they always had the best glasses, didn't they? Absolutely. The frames, crazy. Curtis Mayfield was sick, too. His frames were sick, though, too. And I was thinking, you love the glasses, so I want to give you, a lastly, a little gift here. Some original yeah. P-Funk yeah. promo glasses. Oh, fuck yes. I don't know. Do you want to try those on at all right now? No. They're not black. But I like these. I'm I think they are black when you put them on. No, but they're not black right now. I could see they're white. But P-Funk glasses there for you, Absol. No, this is crazy. For I mean, and it's like, this is what I'm saying. This go back to like promotional tools and things like that. Like when physical distribution was fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, nice covers and you leave with something, you know, physically, you know. It'd be nice to get back to something like that, you know. Maybe there should be some Absol glasses down the line. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm plotting on the world. Yeah. So, anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? Um, I'm just glad you didn't do nothing too weird. So I had to like punch you because like I told the homies like you know, if it would have been too weird, I would have had to punch you. Like I'm glad you like kept it on a you know cool level. Well, thanks so much, Absol. Keep on rocking in the free world and do 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 yeah. <laughs>